Good day to all. Welcome to Extreme Recap. After having dinner with their families, Jenna and her boyfriend arrive home at the beginning of the movie. However, they get into a fatal car accident on their way there. With only minor injuries, Jenna makes it through, but her boyfriend does not. He passes on the spot, leaving her horrendously scarred cut. The three years after the fact, Jenna is as yet recuperating from her misfortune. She hasn't even dated anybody expecting that she will lose them again one day. The best friend of Jenna's childhood. She accepts Renee's invitation to visit a cabin by the lake. She accepts the invitation and joins Renee and her boyfriend, Michael, in a speedboat to the cabin. They are likewise joined by Michael's companion, Ian, whose uncle claims the lodge. On their way there, it becomes immediately apparent that Michael is playful and carefree. He engages the young ladies. The group finally makes it to the cabin after an hour, where they meet Wade, Ian's uncle. As a welcome drink, the latter has prepared some shots. Jenna politely declines and goes inside to take her medication, but everyone devours them quickly. She does, however, reject taking any pills because they are harmful. Dizzy and reliant on other people. During dinner that evening, Wade informs the group of a nearby festival and announces that he has secured tickets for them. He then extends his warm invitation to Ian and his friends to visit and enjoy themselves. Jenna later observes Wade giving Michael marijuana as she goes outside to play with Wade's dog. Renee and Jenna discuss this, and Renee reveals that Michael has an addiction to smoking and drinking. She claims that she has unsuccessfully attempted to persuade him to quit numerous times. Jenna assures Renee that she is fine and having a good time when she asks her friend if she is enjoying herself. In the meantime, Swim leaves ahead of schedule for the celebration saying that he is liable for orchestrating the firecrackers. The rest of the group is getting ready to leave as well. Michael, not wanting to miss out on such a great opportunity, discovers a sauna in the cabin at that exact moment. Before going to the festival, he persuades the others to take a steam math class. Jenna does not appear to be at ease with this. However, when her companions demand she concurs. After that, she ascends to get ready for the sauna. In her space. General removes the ring that belonged to her deceased boyfriend and secures it alongside her medications. She then heads downstairs to get two water bottles before entering the sauna. Ian informs everyone that Wade created the sauna on his own as the room heats up. It works by heating stones in an electric oven and keeping them at a constant temperature. Soon, everybody starts to sweat a lot. Therefore, Ian suggests taking a dip in the lake. The guys, on the other hand, have drinks in the kitchen while the girls go back to the sauna's warmth as soon as they dive into the freezing water and feel cold. Michael quickly exhausts himself and returns to the sauna. Inside there, he requests that Renee go with him to their room, yet she declines. Furthermore, in the event that she could do without to remain around him when he's alcoholic, she then continues to criticize him. Therefore, Michael leaves on his own to drink more with Wade. After he goes out, Renee communicates her disappointment with Michael's drinking issues. She mentions that she has to care for him because he always gets drunk when they go to a party. He was exceptionally kind and understanding previously, yet, presently, he has changed. But Ian, who is also in the room, comes to his friend's defense and tries to explain his friend's behavior. Beware, babes. My companion's not a drunkard, he simply loves turning up. This main increases. Renee, outrage. She is getting tired of taking care of everyone all the time. All at once, everybody hears an uproarious clamor coming from outside, stressed that Michael might have stumbled and harmed himself. Renee chooses to keep an eye on him. Notwithstanding, for reasons unknown, she can't open the sauna entryway confused. Additionally, Ian attempts to open it without success. Jenna starts to frenzy and starts shouting as loud as possible, expecting that something awful has occurred. Renee rapidly quiets her down and asks on the off chance that she has taken her prescription. Jenna, on the other hand, acknowledges that she was trying to live without her pills and didn't take them. Before long, everybody starts to get frantic, and they holler out for Michael through the little glass window. However, despite making numerous attempts, they do not receive a response. Ian is certain that Michael is pranking them until the end. Nonetheless, Jenner uncovers that Swim gave him weed. Therefore, even if this is a joke, 
Michael won't remember that he locked them in the sauna. Let's be some good marijuana. Renee maintains a complete neutral position. Perhaps due to the fact that she is about to be roasted in the scorching sauna. Renee suggests breaking the window after the three have finished their numerous arguments and look through the glass window to see that something is blocking the door. However, Anne is hesitant to immediately begin causing damage to his uncle's property. He demands that they will discover another way, guaranteeing them that they have an adequate air supply. He also emphasizes that the rising temperature should be their primary concern. At the conclusion, it is explained that the thermostat is what Jennifer sees hidden behind the thermometer. Be that as it may, the gathering can't switch the intensity off utilizing it on the grounds that the controls are situated external the sauna. The thermostat only tells the heater to turn off when the desired temperature is reached, and the temperature can only be changed from outside. As a result, Ian warns the girls against altering the thermostat. In the following scene, the gas abruptly begins to hiss, causing Ian concern that the room's temperature is too high. Renee presses and becomes impatient, so she grabs a ladle and tries to smash the window's glass. Ian eventually decides to break the window himself after trying unsuccessfully and witnessing Renee lose her mind. He removes a hot rock from the heater with a towel and a ladle. Before grabbing it, he cools it off by dropping it in water. He then tries to break the window with it again, but the glass doesn't break and his hand soon starts to bleed. They call for Michael once more through the window, but he's on that oh. Gee. Kush. So they still don't hear from him. However, he doesn't give up hope and keeps pushing with everything he has because his hard work finally pays off. As the glass eventually breaks, allowing some fresh air into the room, they call for Michael again through the window, but he's on that oh. Gee. Kush. After that, when Ian looks out the window, it becomes abundantly clear that Michael did not lock them in. A ladder is stuck between the raised platform and the doorknob. However, as the room gets significantly cooler, the girls feel relieved. In any case, Ian uncovers that the radiator will walk out on the grounds that they had set the sonic temperature to 185 degrees. Therefore, Dishonor will never reach that temperature because the window is broken, and the heater will continue to operate. As a result, he devises a solution. He suggests covering the rock in a towel and removing the ladder with it. However, despite his knowledge and determination, he fails. Renee suggests breaking the thermostat to turn off the heat as time runs out, but Anne intervenes. Swarming and warning them that if they don't succeed, the sauna could heat up to a dangerous 250 degrees. Jenna and Renee get into a fight as a result. What's more, as the young ladies keep debilitating their excess energy, Ian concocts a novel thought. In the hope that it will turn off the power to the sauna, he suggests blowing the fuse on one of the lights. He must carry out the plan, despite the fact that it is risky. Ian removes the light bulb and uses a damp towel to forcefully gem the socket after a little thought. His goal is to cause the circuit and blow the fuse. The strategy fails, regrettably. Indian falls unconscious to the ground and is electrocuted. He is now known as Korean Barbecue. The girls haste to assist him however, the absence of light has made the situation even more dire. The scene then cuts to the ground in the vicinity of the festival venue. While he gets ready to set off the fireworks, Wade lets his dog play. Ian and the other's health continues to deteriorate after several hours. But then they hear the bark of Wade's dog all of a sudden. They become confident once more and they begin hollering out for the canine. Upon hearing their screams, the intelligent animal realizes that they are in trouble. Michael also arrives at the same time and notices the anxious dog. Renee and the others begin to scream loudly when they hear his voice. But at that exact moment, Wade, the fireworks start, obstructing the group's call for assistance. After that, the dog jumps into the water and leads him back to the cabin, where they meet Michael. Additionally, it has been revealed that earlier, he fell asleep on the couch as a result of that marijuana. He now believes that his friends have already attended the festival on their own. Michael claims that the dog's barking was the only sound he heard when he awoke, inquires about his attendance at the festival. However, Michael reveals that he has already been once, but he was denied entry because he did not bring a ticket. Wade feels terrible when he hears this. As a result, he invites Michael over to smoke more marijuana. Then again, Renee and the others run out of water, and she develops progressively eager in a condition of distress, 
Renee gets ready to crush the indoor regulator with a stone, yet Jenna snatches her and attempts to stop her. During the conflict, Renee lost consciousness after Jenna hit her in the head with the rock by accident. As she explains that she did not intend to hit her friend, Jenna breaks down in tears and is immediately overcome with regret. Ian responds by escorting the unconscious individual away from the heater and reassuring Jenna that everything will be alright. However, the ordeal shakes Jenna. She goes on to explain that she was only trying to prevent Renee from destroying the thermostat because Ian had previously stated that doing so would cause their deaths. She then executed her. In any case, when she asks how he is familiar with this, shockingly. According to Ian, he was just guessing. Jenna is taken aback by this, and she breaks the thermostat herself in a fit of rage. A modern-day miracle, their most terrible trepidation materializes, and the radiator suddenly turns on as the temperature keeps on ascending in feeling of sadness and frenzy escalates. He makes the decision to destroy the heater himself in a last-ditch effort. Sadly, this ends up being an incredibly ill-conceived notion as he gets singed to death, he has now become. The heater, the tandoori, subsequently explodes, but Jenna miraculously opens the door in time to save herself. Jenna steps outside to rehydrate herself after escaping the dangerous situation. After that, she makes her way to her room to take her medication. However, something simply does not feel right. She realizes at this point that she was merely hallucinating and that she is still in the sauna. Michael, on the other hand, smokes with Wade when he returns to the cabin without seeing anyone. He smokes some more and nods off on the sofa. Everyone, including Michael, Jenna, Renee, and Diane, the latter of whom is dead, is still in the sauna. Janet takes Renee to the window as soon as she wakes up. The gas leak improved the helper's breathing. To keep her name close to the window, Genetization ties two towels together and hangs them from the beam. She then locates the gas leak's source and, just before she passes out, covers it with a ladle. After that, we move to a flashback that explains how the issue started in the first place. Michael, it turns out, had, aside from the sauna, due to his intoxication, accidentally knocking over some things. He didn't tidy up the wreck and left the stepping stool situated against the entryway which later became wedged between the entryway and the raised floor. Wade comes back and notices when Renee tried to leave the sauna in the present. When he looks out the window, Renee is trapped in the sauna. Frightened, he expeditiously contacts the specialists, bringing both the police and the paramedics as the survivors are at long last protected. Michael understands his error and breaks into tears of regret. However, he won't give up smoking. The movie comes to a close in the ambulance, where Renee reaches out to Jenna for comfort and support. So you heard it, everyone. The lesson of this story isn't to partake in ganja since no one can tell when you could lock your bud inside a sauna, and he'll explode himself attempting to get out. Turn on notifications, please subscribe for more videos like this, and like the channel to support it. Thank you very much for watching.